it's very hard to pick a company, but it's much easier to pick a sector. And then, you know, if the company is not great, then as long as you figure that out, then you can move to a great company early on in your career. I guess sectors that, you know, and you talk about this sort of Gartner hype curve, which is really interesting, which is this sort of like what's peaking and what's troughing and what's kind of like plateauing. I encourage kind of folks in their early stages of their career to almost think like an early stage venture capitalist. Like how would you kind of place bets if you're an early stage venture capitalist? And these are sectors which have some sort of fundamental kind of technology innovation that is enabling them to kind of break through into a sort of mass market proposition. You know, they need to be kind of novel enough that there's not thousands and tens of thousands of people doing it, but not niche enough that no one's interested in what you're doing. So stuff that I think is starting to become mainstream over the next couple of years will be around AI. The promise has been with us for many years, but I think it's fundamentally starting to get so good that it's going to permeate all our society in hopefully very good ways. Another area I think is computational biology. 2020 has shone a light on healthcare and this computational biology and CRISPR. And it's just such a fascinating sector. And you look at the way that trends have evolved in silicon, how they're applying to genomic sequencing and other areas where I think that's a really terrific area. I'm still, you know, midterm excited about blockchain and kind of areas like that. And then also midterm excited about VR. We're in this sort of mixed reality world right now where it is literally mixed reality where we're kind of looking at screens and people. And I think that is going to create some sort of breakthrough opportunities in the next few years. And that I thought was the great point. Take VR as an example. If you join a startup or something anywhere in the VR space, that is going to be an area that's relevant for the next 10 to 15 years. But we don't know exactly the growth curve that it will be on. But that's the point that your article was getting across that I thought was so good, was that you will build specialisms, you will build contacts in that area, and they will stand you in good stead for the next 10 years of your career. One of the things that sort of as a venture capitalist, we look at when is the right time for this company to exist? So why now? The sort of question, why now? And it often comes down to kind of three different sort of characteristics. One is just the technology trends. An example is sort of is solar. The price of that's getting lower and lower and lower. I think it's now about to be or is the cheapest form of electricity. And so that industry is clearly exploding. Similarly, in kind of other areas, so understand these technology trends and they generally sort of compound over time and continue. Then looking at the sort of cultural trends that are happening. So what's the cultural catalyst for kind of this breakthrough idea and remote work? You know, you think about virtual reality. Okay, that's happening. And the third is sort of economics. There's an economic breakthrough. And so I think you may not kind of get it right exactly the right time. But if you're building an expertise in a career, then I think you kind of have to think about what are the long-term trends in an industry and, and sort of feel confident that maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but if you're early on, you're willing to take that risk. You have a front seat at this amazing breakthrough industry, which could be career-defining in a really exciting way for folks. 